out here once again at the uh, the iconic Green Park in Connordale in Queensland. Uh, been a beautiful day, the 2023 KTM motocross bike launch. New generation of bikes. Here with Mike Sleater, specifically with Mike Sleater, by demand, because <laughs> uh, as you may have heard if you looked at our range review previously on all these bikes, Mike worked for 15 years here in North America, up till two years ago, officially full-time job with KTM developing the future year models. and. And yet these new generation bikes from 23 onwards, something that, you know, Mike really hasn't, hasn't been that involved with, mate. But yeah. like, you know, hey, it's a, we, we talked all about the range, yeah. you know, and the, and the philosophy and the big changes and, and what that means. But let's sort of concentrate just on the two strokes. So we've got the 125, 250, um, yeah. 300. Take me through it, mate. You know, we've got electric starts now. We've got fuel injection. A lot of changes. We've got electronic power valve. But, um, yeah, a lot of changes. Yeah. Um, like you said earlier, never ridden any of these models in pre-production form. Um, seen leaks of it and whatnot, but so my eyes was as green as anyone else's coming out here and kind of had some little heart emojis seeing them. <laughs> I'm still riding in 125 actively for some fun. So I'm kind of up to that two stroke. I'm still riding them actively. But having an EFI on a bike, I, you know, I was like, man, my, my impression of it is TPI. That feeling of TPI, and yeah. instantly as I heard someone riding and started up, I'm like, nah, that doesn't sound like a TPI bike. Yeah. And it has that that pop, that, sp you know. Which will literally be music to a lot of people's yeah. ears. They, they want to feel that crazy carb two-stroke, but they also want the efficiencies and the fuel yes. efficiency and the automatic, you know, like a re rejecting or refueling Absolutely. that comes with the EFI. And, and a couple of years ago, KTM group changed carbs. They went from the PW, PWK carb to a new carb, yeah. and it hasn't been the same. Rich down low, lean up top, lean down low, yeah. rich up top. And this new EFI system is just, it's, it's right all the time. It's, it's would, right all the time. Would you say that that system has been adapted by any particular model better than the others? I'd say 125 is, is, is almost spot on. Um, it, it, it runs so clean, so efficient. The motor runs great. Like I was like, man, it feels like my 125 that I'm riding, but a little cleaner. It's always, you know, I'm running the stock carb still on my gas gas uh, 125. But this thing just is more efficient. You know, you could upshift, over rev, it wouldn't fall on its faces it's, and stumble from a fuel efficiency problem. Um, it was easier to track around smooth turns. But the best thing was that new chassis, that this chassis is built across all ranges, which is very hard to do. You think how, who's gonna suffer the most in what model? I thought maybe the 150 or 125 is gonna suffer the most yep. because it's a lighter, the lightest bike. Yep. It actually, I think, in, of the range, the chassis helps the most. Standing on this, um, you know, landing, or this lip of this uh, ski jump, you know, the 125 typically has a bit of a, a harsh, it's a, a harsh landing, it's so light, the bike kind of skips across everything. With this new chassis um, and new design, it gave it more of a more planted feel. Yeah. It gave you a more comfortable feel. It wasn't as pingy across bumps. It drove through more like a, t t a four stroke. Yeah. So yes, the EFI is great. Yes, the electric start is great. But I think the biggest shining thing is just the overall chassis changes. Yeah help this bike and again. And when you say, like, you know, they're sharing something with a 450, but also the engine hangers, massively different. So yep. that's what they've done, I think. Yep. 5300, very different from the 125, 150. Yes. Just the hangers and the way yeah. that They're not allows, off the cylinder head anymore, they're off yeah. the cylinder. And the way that allows the frame to flex, right? Yep. It, yeah. It's the, most people that are riding two strokes, especially 125, it's so light, they skip across bumps. My suspension is still stuck on my, my 125 because it just doesn't get me in trouble. It's like, I couldn't be bothered changing it. Um, this suspension is much more comfortable than my model year 22. It is, it's thicker feeling and it, that feeling from sus of that suspension comes from the chassis. Yeah. That, that more um, control, that, that firmer, firmer f um, chassis is, allows the suspension to be um, complementing the chassis, not just relying on the chassis to do its work. So like I said earlier, electric starts, crazy getting used to, um, you know, some key things with the EFI is the bike idles. I'm not used to a bike idling. Yeah. A two-stroke, I'm used to like bing, bing, boom, dying. Yeah. You need it to idle. There's a tuning capability with those bikes. So don't go home and dial it back and let it not idle. I learned some stuff yeah, from the Yeah, idle screw affects the whole. Yeah, the, idles, yeah. The, idle, the idle screw affects the overall mapping. So don't get home and think you're gonna tune it. And yeah. you know we may have had a rider here doing that today that messed up <laughs> their bike. But um, we learned. And, and there's a lot of learning from this. And um, my biggest takeaway is a, They've, they've taken, I'd say, a big leap forward in chassis development in two strokes across the two stroke range, but the 125 reaped the most benefits. Okay. Listening to the sort of, you know, the, the talk around the pits, I think a lot of guys, the 250 two stroke kept coming up as like the kind of like standout. Yep. Um, I know that, you know, these bikes are still sort of pre production, in particular the mapping, I think everything else is pretty close. So, yep. again, just talking about that, the way the, the uh, EFI has been adapted to the bikes, you think 250 
you said the 125 is the biggest beneficiary, <laughs> then the 250, but the 300 still a little bit of work to get that right because it's just such a beast, right? Yeah, the 300, I've built some KTM 300s, my personal bikes, years past with the KTM Power Parts 300 kit. It bolts on, really cool kit, and it gave it a lot of like bottom and grunt, but maybe affected the top, you know? Um, the 300 tw model year 23, it didn't fill in that bottom hole. It just picked up more mid and top. It gave this almost a wow factor, like, <laughs> holy cow, this thing's fast. I went from the green, which is the aggressive, back green to up, the yeah, white, yeah. Um, and uh, to have more control. So wow, what, when, in, in, to have a bike to give you that feeling of like, I gotta slow it down, that's, that's not been happening in two strokes for a long time. Yeah, but I just love the whole indulgence of a bike that doesn't fit in any class, <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, let's make it 300, because yeah. we can. Yeah, it, it's, it's kind of like, you know, middle fingers in the air. Like, yeah. we, we, we're building, we're not building, like, KTM's not building bikes for what the uh, rules and regulations want. They're building bikes for what the consumer wants. Yeah. And the consumer says, we want to go faster. We're used to 450s. We want more torque. We, you know, and they're like, well, we'll build you a production 300. So there's KTM once again, just leading the way with um, um, R&D and, and progression. Well, the next thing they might argue these things get homologated for 450 plus, you never know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't think they're as competitive as we'd like to hope they'd be, <laughs> but but there's a racer, small person, and there's a, a, a rider base. Yes. We have a bigger rider base, and I think the bigger rider base is demanding something like the 300. Well, also 300 in enduro circle, so two to one over 250, yep. you know, two strokes. So yeah, exactly right. Yeah, of course you're gonna want it. We're just horseback hungry in this country, huh? Yeah, absolutely, you know yeah. <laughs> it's it's really cool to see, you know, the the, the tech being, and when, going back to my, my tenureship at KTM, I've never seen this, and that was, what, four years ago, and now it's here. Yeah. In four years, they developed all new motor, all new if I, uh, that that's impressive. That's yeah. impressive to get go to market strategy that quick with something that's this good. And from all reports, we're going to be seeing this, um, you know, this throttle body based uh, t um, fuel injection as opposed to the TPI on the 2024 model enduro bikes. Yep. And there's, we a all, of, there's a couple of the way they get around Euro Five on that. Yeah, one, I believe. and, and you know, like we know KTM's history, what you see in SX trickles the yeah. XC and EXC. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, you know, just the comfort of the seat, the ergonomics, everything goes involved with the chassis, foot pegs like we talked about in the broader conversation. Yeah. It really has helped these two strokes be a better version than in years past. And they almost vibrate less now than the four strokes. With the counterbalance in there now for a few years, yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's, huh? it's absolutely yeah. incredible. It's, the, it's, it's that experience. You want that riding experience to be fun. Um, that, you know, that parking lot feel, that seat. Um, you know, they have rubber mounts now on the clamps and all these things to, to carry over to that experience being yeah. fun, you know, that ready to race model where you don't have to do anything. Yeah. That was incredible. Yeah. Big swings. It wasn't like, oh, it's a little better. The electronic power valve had a, a, had a big swing. Yeah. It, was, it was really cool. Yeah. Mate, it's been awesome to have you out here. Get yeah. the sort of insight, you know, to, to put this in the context of these bikes that have come for, you know, yeah. that you've been working on for the best part of, uh, Jesus, a decade and a half. Yeah. That ages you a little bit. Huh? Yeah. But it must also be nice to sort of see some of the tech, particularly on these two strokes and the way it's evolved and, you know, picked up where you left off, mate. That's yeah, and if you have a current model two stroke, you're going to be envious of the guy that comes out with <laughs> yeah. the new one. Like, yeah. that, that's cool. Like, yeah. that gives that, gives, it gets more bikes turning and moving and growing the sport. So, in growing that pie, it's, it's really exciting times for all of us uh, motoheads. Absolutely.